3.5 Sonnet is now the leader in that respect. The tech behind the demo is significantly different because Wonder Studio needed a 3D model that it then uh, put your video in. Prompt to voice. So you can create a new voice based on any kind of prompt that you, you want. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Today is October 23rd, 2024. You're listening and watching The Daily AI Show Live. And because it is Wednesday, that means we are going to dive deep into all the news that came up over the last seven days. And this is news that we personally think is interesting. It's not always the top headline getters, although we try to get some of those in as well. And in order to share these news stories with you, we have Carl, Andy, Beth, and I'm Brian. Welcome. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to everybody popping into the um, into the chat thread. If you want to ever join us live, we do this every weekday at 10 a.m. Eastern. And uh, the best place to join us live and get your thoughts as part of the show would be to go over to YouTube and join us from there, because that's where we have a really growing community of people who are, are there daily. Sometimes they're having their their best <laughs> conversations are happening uh, aside from the show. And so there's a lot of new information and thoughts and ideas going on in there as well. And also, I just want to make sure that you know, at any time you can click this QR code, it'll take you over to the dailyishow.com. There you can find out more about the show. We're revamping our very own Aaron is revamping the uh, website. So that'll be coming soon. But in the meantime, you can learn more about the show. You can learn how to get in touch with us if you're looking to do um, some stuff with your business. If you're looking to build some stuff out, we have people reaching out that are looking for, you know, building out database help and stuff like that. They want to connect an AI, so sort of like rag type systems. We're helping with people with that all the time, jumping on calls. Sometimes that's as far as it goes. Sometimes we actually end up working with them. So if you have interest in that, and then finally, you can also find our newsletter there, which uh, goes out every Sunday. It's free. And it's a great way to get additional information above and beyond this show. Okay, that's all the the top of the top of the order stuff. Let's jump into the news. Obviously, there were some some really big announcements just in the last 24, 48 hours. Do you guys want to start with probably the biggest one, which came from Anthropic, aka Claude? Um, and they not only announced they had a twofer. They only not, they not only announced their uh, Sonic three point five and some newer models that are cheaper. Uh, probably the big headline that actually stood out to me was that they said the new Haiku is as, as powerful as their old Opus. And when you think about that, what that means for anybody that not following along with all the naming conventions, Haiku is their smallest, cheapest model. Sonnet was in the middle and Opus was above that. You could get Sonnet for free up to a certain limitation. But Opus is above that. And so now they're saying in this is definitely less than a year that their smallest, cheapest model is now outperforming their previous largest, most expensive model. Pretty crazy there. And of course, the second part of that was they came out with something that now allows you to have um, limited functionality on your computer. In other words, you can now write prompting sort of feels like agentic work here where you can ask it to accomplish some tasks and Claude through API will go about trying to accomplish those tasks on your computer. So we can certainly talk more about that, but let's, let's sort of jump in with what you guys, you know, initial thoughts were on both sides. I mean, there's really two different stories here. There's the, again, massive improvements and depreciating value or, or not depreciating, depreciating costs of models. And then there's this quite sort of other thing that Anthropic is also uh, dropping on us as well. That could be a glimpse into the future. Go for it, Andy. Yeah. So I, I saw uh, the news about Claude 3.5 Sonnet update, uh, and there was a display of the benchmarks and comparing it to all of the open AI models, 4.0, et cetera, all the way down the line. And it's significantly improved relative to those models. So 3.5 Sonnet is now the leader in that respect, with the exception of, and they have a note at the bottom of the chart, we do not include O1, which is the most advanced model from OpenAI. Why? Because it takes additional time for pre-calculation, and so it's not a fair comparison. So 
Yeah. If you want to rank all of the the frontier models out there right now, I think you know without you know a, a nitpicking approach, I would say probably O one is the very best in respect of advanced reasoning. Claude three point five sonnets update now makes it number two, uh, and then all the other open AI models that we normally use, unless you select O one specifically. Um, and it generates a thought process and planning process before it actually responds to you. Uh, the, those would be the number one and two in the ranking leaderboard. Yeah, I think it's a good call out too. And I mean, something Sam himself said, Sam Altman said, uh, I'll just go first names now. I'll just say Sam. An answer. <laughs> uh, Sam Altman said uh, when O1 Preview came out that they were, that was a deliberate uh, move to not name it under the GPT naming convention, right, Andy? Because he himself said this is fundamentally it's built differently because of the way they have the advanced reasoning. The model acts differently. So yeah, a hundred percent. If I'm any of the other Gemini, if I'm if I'm any llama, any of the other ones, I'm not going to throw my latest and greatest new model unless it's a reasoning model. If it's like in that class. I'm not going to throw it up in uh, a head-to-head -head comparison because it really is apples and oranges. So it's like, I would be exactly like Anthropic is like, yeah, no, that's, that's a type of language model. That's not what we're head-to-head -head comparison to because it wouldn't, it, like you said, for reasoning or deep reasoning, it wouldn't be a fair fight. Um, however, O1 Preview, there's a lot of things it doesn't do particularly well, in which case, you know, your sonnets or uh, four O's and stuff would be a better fit. And there are, a growing number of people that truly would pick, well, just Sonnet beforehand or over 4 over and over and over again, um, just because of how strong Lotto was. And I guess from what I'm seeing with Anthropic, 3.5 is also supposed to be very or much better at coding, which is an area that I, I personally wouldn't be great at like compare contrasting. But I mean, I don't know, Beth, you do a little bit more on the coding side than I ever do. Have you had a chance or have you had even seen anything like on X talking about this new 3.5 and whether it's it's capable of doing better coding? I haven't seen very much because like for the for like coding, all of the models are relatively um, at a level where if you know what you're doing with coding, like it's it's fine. And if you don't know what you're doing with coding, it's also fine. Like there's not. There's not like, ooh, uh, I don't know what I'm doing and therefore um, Claude made three mistakes versus uh, GPT-40 making, uh, with Canvas making five mistakes, right? Like that's just not a discernible experience for people who are just saying, code it and then we'll just go back and forth and I'll give you the errors. Andy, you're mm -hmm. nodding. Let, let, I, I wanted to mention that the, the computer use thing that we're going to discuss now, which is an addition to Claude 3.5 Sonnet on the API, is already, as it is announced, it's already integrated into Replit, yes. Asana, and DoorDash. Okay, those three companies had advanced use of this, of this computer use integration, and I'll describe in a moment how it works. But Replit, which is one of these coding agents, now has the ability to watch your screen. It didn't have this before. You had to just basically interact with the agent on the side, and it couldn't even look. You'd have to copy and paste into the chat what was on the coded coding screen in Replit. But now, computer use from up from um, uh, uh, Anthropic. I was wanting to say OpenAI, but it's not true. It's Anthropic <laughs> is coming out of the woods here again. Uh, Anyway, a Replit is now able to do this. Let me explain quickly how the computer use system works. It takes static screenshots in, it, rapidly of your screen and feeds them through an open socket via the API into the model. And then the model, if you've prompted it to be uh, analyzing what's going on on the screen, can then make determinations and t then take actions and move your cursor and knows how to move your cursor. Why? Because it's getting snapshots instantly as the cursor moves in order to achieve something on the screen. So it basically executes mouse clicks based on pixel calculations on the screenshots that are coming into it in real time. This is fascinating. I did not see that coming. I did not see that coming as a way of doing it. And then to, to know that Replit 
has already integrated that. I'm excited to go back to Replit from Bolt now <laughs> because Replit is. I'm waiting for Replit to get fixed all a number of, of in a number of ways. But now that it can see what's happening on my screen, you know, the, it, it's integrated there. Uh, you know, I, I think it might get much faster at solving problems that I'm running into that are like basically problems that coding developers wouldn't have, but I, as a non-coding developer, do have. And now I've got the assistant able to see exactly what's happening from my rate. Now, let me just mention quickly before I close on my rant here, uh, the API is required. So this, this computer use function is not really designed for you as a consumer user of Claude services or 3.5 Sonnet. It's made for people who are going to develop automations and workflows that work inside your computer, but use the 3.5 Sonnet architecture as the guide to do that. And that's an, and Replit's an example of that. Asana probably will be the first place that you can have an experience of working with the Claude 3.5 Sonnet thing, acting via the API that Asana has to uh, Claude, where you don't have to actually set up your own Claude API access in order to do that. A couple points that I want to touch on here is the, we've seen this when you talk, Andy, about it's constantly reviewing your screen. So we saw this back in May when GPT-40 was announced. So we haven't gotten that video component of advanced voice mode yet, right? Because you saw the demo of the person walking around, where am I, what am I doing, blah, right. blah, blah. So that's there. Now, I was talking to Brian before we, we went live and remember way, I don't know what episode, what last year was, we talked about Hyperwrite and it being able to do sort of the same thing. I remember in the show, I was, hey, order me a, Hawaii, a large Hawaiian pizza in Calgary. And it would go to Domino's, even though it wanted to go to Domino's. But it it, it did, you know, it, it I was using it by a browser and it would control the browser and, and, and do the searches and all that kind of stuff. So I'm... What I think what's really neat about this API though is I've been seeing some people saying, oh, it's not that great. I'm like, mm, it, the expectation was never for it to actually be fully baked. They even said, hey, we still have issues with it. Here's a, even like that Yellowstone, like it would just halfway through a task switch and, and start browsing National Geographic site. So, but I can only imagine Anthropic wants to collect this data to see how, how developers are using it and provide, you know, improve the system. I can only imagine, I'm thinking more, hey, what, what are the other AI labs going to plan for us? Whether it's Google, OpenAI, Meta, right? So what's going on? So I think the, uh, Beth, remember the, the, was it Andre Karpathy or Paul Ratzer? I can't remember who wrote they always talk about the world of bits. Way that back. was Paul. Paul Ritz. That was Paul So Ritz. way back in, I think, 2021 or 2020. And then there was another thing. Um, somebody else I saw talking about tooling. Like that's the next big thing where all the labs are working on how right. to enable these systems to work on leveraging your system. Now, I do want to post something back to everyone here is... Nick Dobos has said, hey, I don't understand what the deal is with this. And even when in our chat to, hey, what's the big deal of it controlling a computer? Where there's good points, valid points made, where even if you allow it to, to, to do these tasks, there's so many checkpoints that a human has to review to ensure the validity of it. And I think Logan Kilpatrick from Google mentioned, hey, I think we're overestimating what from an agentic feature because there are just some things like high risk things, quote unquote, high risk. And he's talking about if I asked an AI to go and register my car, there's so many things that could potentially go wrong with registering your car. But if I go out and order a pizza, eh, not that high risk if I get, I don't know, the like a Hawaiian pizza, I mean, a pepperoni pizza instead of a Hawaiian pizza, 
what are the checkpoints that I can put in? So I just want to put it back because it's very interesting. But obviously, we're at the very ground level, so I'm curious to see. Yeah, let let, let me uh, give you a snippet on on what you just said, which is um, uh, Anthropic said specifically that there are limitations right now on scrolling, dragging, and zooming, those more continuous actions that we use with a mouse. Because remember, it's just taking snapshots. And so it's not very good at scrolling, which is a really important uh, skill if you're going to navigate a website externally as an agent. Uh, but th th again, like you say, Carl, this is just the very earliest instance. This is the very first time a frontier model is available to offer a feature like this and it's going to just get better and better to the point where a very large multi-step reasoning model uh, and then eventually smaller models that are trained to do this kind of thing explicitly will be very good at navigating on our computer. Right. And I'm going to say that I actually don't care as much about the clicking as the understanding where the mouse is on the screen. And... Uh, I don't remember when it was, but there was a point at which <clears throat> Salesforce added the ability to change where the mouse was going in in like the kind of help that you could set up for users to engage in, like an in-app in tutorial or in in org tutorial. And that sped up so much, right? It changes, okay, over there on the top left, or we've put like a little yellow thing on it. Uh, we want you to understand that this is the next step for you. You're going to like click into this form field and you're going to type what you're going to type. This now adds that, right? So now you're j just, it doesn't even need to click. It's just moving to the section that you need to be paying attention to. And it's not trying to describe it because when you don't know what's happening, I recently went through, Jumi shared a bunch of his workflow and there was a lot of like up on the left, uh, up on the left, See, no, up higher on the left, the menu, the menu bar on the right. Like, it's like I am just like in a field. I don't know what I'm looking at. How much easier would that be if the mouse was just like, oh, all right. No, it's just going to put it there for me. And now, I mean, that shaves like maybe a second and a half off. But what it really shaves off is the overwhelm of not knowing what you're looking at. Right. And that is going to be huge because, as we've seen, the biggest challenge with AI is less the ability and more the adoption. Yeah, I have a, I have a great little anecdote I want to share. Yesterday, I was working in Supabase, and I was trying to run a query in Supabase uh, to a yeah, script to you know to update the tables in in Supabase, which is a database. Um, and I'm using the Bolt agent, and I'm just saying, look, I, I, I'm putting in the script, and, and, I'm, and I can't find where you run the script. What, you know, there's, there's, there's no active button. In this. So it's explaining to me, well, it's, it's typically a kind of a play icon, or it's a, it's a button that says run on it, and I'm like, I don't see it. Well, it can't see my screen. It took me a half an hour, and later I could see that, oh, the, the actual chat window that I'm talking to is overlaying, like the, the super base chat window. It has its own AI support. And I asked it too, and it's explaining me that, oh, yeah, it's there, it's there. But th there's a scrolling bar that my window is compressed enough that the run button was disappeared underneath the chat. Okay, this is a stupid error <laughs> on my part, but if the computer could see my screen, and, and see that, oh, you just need to move the scroll bar over, it would have been fixed in, in 10 seconds rather than half an hour. Okay, so what I want to do is pause on uh, the Anthropic Park this is for the new show, and we were at 19 minutes into the show, <laughs> and we are going to talk about this more on a future show. What we want to do, and this is pretty typical for us, we're, we're not always trying to be the first to put out a uh, video on a particularly new topic because often it takes a little bit of time to kind of uncover, see what other people are building. And so with this particular case with Anthropic's uh, computer control, um, they recommend, Anthropic recommends doing this in a, vir a virtual environment that you want to sort of segregate and protect your computer 
because this is very beta and they do not want to be responsible for doing malicious things. And so there's a bit of an environment that needs to be set up in order to um, do this appropriately. And so what we want to do as our team is have an opportunity to set it up, play with it in a safe way, and then bring that back to you guys, our audience, and say, hey, based on what we individually decided were the use cases we want to do, this is what we found. This is where it fell apart. I fully expect it to fall apart. Um, but this is how far it got. Uh, what does this mean? Okay, this means that we're probably moving in this direction. Or whatever. So we'll definitely come back to it. Um, I would say it's probably going to be a, a little more over a week. So maybe not next week, the week after we'll get into that. I did really? the chat. Uh, and I just want to come in um, because uh, there's conversation in the chat about um, for the regular Joe, Gwen is saying for the regular Joe, uh, like, why do we really care? What am I missing? Um, so we're going to move on. We're not going to answer that today, but look for it in the coming weeks because we absolutely will answer this. And it may be you don't. Right. Regular Joe, maybe you don't care. Right. Uh, but but we'll do a little bit more. On well, I, I cared yesterday. I wish I had it so they could find my damn run. Um, and, and I think, you know, Gwen, sometimes a lot of times with this show, it's like, yeah. what's in it for me today? Mm -hmm. What's in it for me in six months, nine months or a year? That changes drastically. So we'll definitely cover that because, yes, in this show, there's often times where we go yesterday with agents where we go, oh, okay, this, that. And we're talking in like future sense because what we want to do is say, okay, as workers, as as uh, business folks who either have our own businesses or work for corporate or, or whatever we're doing, 1099 people, whatever. And we're thinking, okay, how does this impact me? What's the whiff I'm on this? And a lot of times it's just saying like, okay, I can see down the road and how would I reverse back up to where I am today? And what pivots or adjustments should I be making today in order to not paint myself professionally into a corner, which is a great place to pivot into a new topic here that came up. And I would love to share it, but it seems like every time I try to share this particular screen, um, it crashes a bit on here. So, you know, yay me and, and new computers. Um, but uh, Runway released what they call Act One. I'm sorry, Jimmy is not here because I think Jimmy- I can play it. If you want, yes, I do, video. and let's talk about it while you pull this up, Carl. Thank you, because it, it like I tried to share the video of it. So what this is is uh, it's a tool for generating expressive character performances, essentially. And Carl's going to pull it up on screen. Essentially, they show people with a white background, sort of like exactly like what you're just seeing right now. Go ahead and play it. Go for it. Play a little. What? You're going to fire me because there's hot milk everywhere on the floor of the coffee shop? I mean, it's one latte. It's not that big of a deal. Everything's fine. Everything's totally great. This is going to be the best day ever. Smashed my phone the other night. And you know how much I love that phone. Okay, all right. Just breathe. <sighs> okay, maybe you don't breathe that hard. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew there were so many kinds of beans to choose from? Faba, black, kidney, butter. All right, Carl, I would say you can probably pause it there. So, hey, I'll bring me back up on the side. We can always stop sharing. There you go. Um, so I, you can kind of see the gist of it. And so basically they show people sitting with this just white drop backdrop to it and they're recording their facial expressions. And what Runway is saying is we can capture the minute and minute, minuscule different changes in the way I might move my eyelids or different things. And it's really capturing now a fine, a finely, um, a detailed uh, aspects of my face and then translating that into other voices and other things that we've definitely seen with avatars. Now, like a lot of things, we didn't see this live. At least I didn't see anything live. So how much time was between the time they captured, they did the the actual like face capture to the time they had something that was fully produced? Don't know. How many times was it wrong and produced an absolutely awful result? Don't know. So there's a lot of unknowns here. However, like a lot of things, it is allowing people to kind of see where the future is. And so what I want to bring up is a real personal story on this, not for me, but for really good friends. I've mentioned these friends before. One of the guys I grew up with and I've quite literally known since 87 when he moved across the street from me in Georgia. Um, but we were both from New York, so it helped, right? We were, you know, like we had brothers in arms um, and uh, this family moved across the street from me. Well, one of them became a very successful uh, animator, and I've mentioned him before. His name is Dave Torres. He uh, currently works for Pixar. So does his wife, Jessica. 
And uh, they both worked now for Pixar for many, many years. Dave worked for many of the other companies before that, like DreamWorks and is responsible, not responsible, but part of the reason that many of those successful, sex, successful films worked. Jessica, quite literally yesterday, shared this runway AI on Facebook. And it was a simple post that I might need to look for a different job, essentially. just I'm just paraphrasing, right? It's not exactly what she said. My response to that was like, I see this differently, Jessica. Just because I have a phone doesn't that can take pe- pictures does not make me a professional photographer. And so while I do see this technology advancing with what Runway is doing and others, where you're going to be able to get very quick facial and full body scans, and that will be able to be manipulated a thousand different ways into animation, there's going to be a large gap. And this is going back to what Carl said about we're still going to need the expertise. Who better than somebody like a Jessica or a Dave or the thousands of other animators who know how to translate words and audio into expressions and the the minuscule things we see in great, great animation. And so maybe somebody like a Jessica is going to have to pivot in the third act of her career. But I also think she, there's a potential for the Jessicas and the Daves of the world to be in high demand because people are going to go, great, we have these amazing tools. Oh my God, I have so many cool ideas on how to do a commercial for our marketing company, blah, 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 blah. Help me because I can't get it from here to here. I see the tool. I need somebody who understands the in-between to it. I need the expertise. And so maybe that's not animation, but maybe that's somebody that's paid very, very well for their consulting. So one to bring up uh, runways because it's an, it's another uh, it's another chicken you know in the armor of people who feel like their jobs are disappearing. Yeah, the the uh, let me just quickly say the there is this implication of the advancement of AI generated animation, at, you know, really making it uh, very difficult to maintain the, the huge numbers of people who are required to do animated features and and animated uh, uh, shorts, all of those things. But it's also democratizing the the kind of thing that I, I hope ultimately I'll be able to do to create little animated shorts that speak to my own grandson, right? And I can record it against a white screen. I can have multiple characters. I can put it together pretty quickly. And it's personalized to his his environment and the names of the people that he knows, but they're all animated characters, you know, of such great quality. I love the idea that this is making it possible for us to do these things. I love jails. I agree. My boss yesterday had, uh, he he was sharing his screen because we had a two hour work session. You guys know this, but I'm just bringing it up. My boss, Jake, and, um, you know, he was sharing his chat GPT and I don't remember what it was. It said it was, it was like Captain Jack or something like that. And he's like, he's laughing. He's like, yeah, you forget ChatGPT has stuff for your kids because he had created a character and was using ChatGPT to do fun, interesting stories with his his kids. And I said, oh, have you tried Choose Your Own Adventure? Because that was something I mentioned to you guys that I had a lot of fun with. This is like, Andy, this is that next evolution of, I came up with a fun idea. Maybe it's a Choose Your Own Adventure. Maybe it's a bear. Maybe I can animate this bear with a funny voice and do the growls and stuff like that and actually create something somewhat animated that just brings the whole thing more to life visually you know so I'll, i'm with you i like it makes me really excited i also understand the experts like my friends dave and jessica who are looking at these rapid advancements in ai and saying is this coming from my job uh will i be employed as an animator specifically in the short to near medium range future so just a heads up that it's slightly more than that and the video that shows that is is sort of buried. There's not a lot that uh, that talks about the fact that they did a two camera uh, effect with one actor playing both parts, right? So it's like a really simple scene uh, where the where the camera is looking at two people who are sitting in a diner across from each other, right? Okay. So now the camera's on one person and they're saying something, and now the camera's on the other person that's saying something, those are played by one actor. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and 
And he's like, me, <laughs> I'm playing all the parts. <laughs> and from a performance perspective, all of this is incredibly exciting. Like let yeah. your characters like just fly and put them out from I... like the number of people, right? We're, we're getting so close to what three humans and AI was that our challenge for the for the Oscar? Oh, for the Oscar, uh, yeah, three three is what we said. Yes, in seven years, I no oh, maybe in December, right? Ooh. Like I mean, it's so much closer. I'm being I, a lot I'm exaggerating. December, but it's yeah. not seven years. It just got closer than that. Carl, I, I want I want Carl, to point out that uh, there's a company called Wonder Studio that did something like this mm-hmm. about a year ago. And actually, I want to play what I created because I used it. Now, I don't know about the voice, but I wanted to to point. It would be, I'm curious because I don't. I really thought Wonder Studio would have taken it and ran with it. So, and not I haven't heard anything. So here's. I just wanted to share this um, this quick video I did using their tech, and it's both action. So I don't know if you can bring it on screen. Yeah. yeah. There we go. So one go. Okay. So I did that about just over a year ago. And Ooh. I thought, okay, it's pretty expensive too for like a month subscription, it's like a hundred and twenty bucks. So I was like, that video cost me $120. So I was like, okay, we wonder studio, let me go for a year, for a mi- for a month just to play with it. Or was it 59? It was a pretty pricey for, for a tech. Was that a motion capture of one of your children? So I, all I did was I got my daughter to do her, her, her um, gymnastic routine. And then what you do is you, yeah. you upload that into wonder studio and then you take one of their eight presets and just drag it over. And I did a couple of them with a couple of videos I did and it kind of works. Like you could see her hair still not like, right. It didn't completely take it over. And I tried to do it with a guy playing a guitar. It worked, but like the hand was kind of off. Yeah. So it was it, but that was like a year ago. So I was like, Oh, and I'm like, okay. what did wonder studio do for a year versus now runway? I actually can use this tool and you can today. I don't know about runway, but it looks really as cool. The exact same thing I saw, the exact same demo, kind of similar demo from Wonder Studio over a year ago. Okay, but the tech behind the demo is significantly different because Wonder Studio needed a 3D model that it then uh, put your video in. This just needs an image. This is mocap, motion capture, uh, layered onto an image with like a 3D understanding, I would say. But it, but the but you do not have to come with the 3D model. You could generate any uh, claymation image that you wanted, or uh, like talking uh, wolf character. Like uh, you 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 uh, the 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 text to 3D model is not anywhere near as uh, robust as the text to image model. So this actually makes it much more ubiquitous in people's, um, yeah, uh, in people's, um, like the average people can get, can get on. Uh, what Wonder Studio made you do, like is a lot of work for you to get your own uh, images in there. Like there's like you actually, it actually had a system for you to use, but it was pretty comprehensive. So if Runway can do it with just a, a picture rather than, because you had to go through and do a full, it would do it for you, but you just have to, there's a certain, there's so many things that you needed to do to create your own character to then be able to do this. So there's, yeah. So it, it, I'm, I'm curious about, again, we haven't, we don't have our hands on this thing. So I, I'm always like, Click video doesn't mean anything until I actually you can't just like great, fantastic that you made this, but until you get your hands on it. Because Wonder Studios video was so slick, but then when you get your hands on it, it's like it works about 80%, 70% right. of the way there. But... So, uh, I wanna I wanna make sure we're moving on to other 
news stories, but this is one and it is just a quick pivot from here, which is Meta's, I checked to make sure this is in the last seven days and it is because it came out on Thursday, Meta's movie gen. And I mentioned this in the newsletter, but you should definitely go check out the short film. There's three of them now, I believe, but the first short film is called, it's I hate AI, but it's I space H eight space AI. I hate AI. It is a wonderful short film by uh, Anish uh, Chiganti. Hopefully I'm not butchering that too much. Um, it's a wonderful short film. And basically it is it is obviously promoting movie gen. But the idea, just this is we're talking about creating, right? This idea of uh, creating and being creative. He it takes himself and he takes his some of his old movies where he forced his little brother to act. And, you know, there's a little, there's a cute scene where it's like a 1990s video and some home movie. And his brother's like, I don't know what you want. I'm not an actor. And you know, his brother's like, just do it. You know? So like, we all have these memories of like running around with our little VHS camcorders or whatever, when we were younger and, you know, acting the scene. I remember my nephew doing this and he's like, this scene was supposed to be in New York with movie gen. I can put New York skyscrapers behind it. With this, I can do that. It's a really cool video. We don't have to stay on it too much, but it is like, since we're talking about this stuff from one way and what other people are doing from the creative standpoint, I highly recommend going to go to um, Meta's YouTube channel or just going to YouTube and checking out that video, I Hate AI. Uh, and you'll you'll be able to find it right away if you do the I, like I said, H8 dash or space AI. You'll find it right away. Super cool. Um, I didn't see it released, but they said that... Um, uh, not Ben Affleck, but uh, Casey Affleck also has a short film and there's supposed to be a third one. And they said all three of them were supposed to come out last week. If you go to their videos, I only see the I Hate AI one from six days ago. So I'm not sure what happened to the other short films, but there's supposed to be a few more that use it. So anyway, that happened. That's news. <laughs> That's a new news yep. story. Uh, let's move into some other news. And we don't have a ton of time. Unfortunately, we spent a lot of time in these first sort of big three. But um, let's sort of rapid fire here. Beth, why don't you tell us uh, some more quick news stories that you want to get in for this week? Okay. AI has a, a new model for reading complex medical scans. It's called Slivet. Uh, and it is um, a, a MRI, right? This, the SL stands for slice. Uh, and it's a vision transformer. And unlike standard 2D images that show length and width, 3D images uh, technologies at depth and these volumetric or 3D images take more time, skill, and attention for an expert's interpretation. And so AI is able to read these uh, 5,000 times faster, right? So this is one of those places where you don't actually have to be better than humans to do it better than humans, right? <laughs> if you're just faster than humans, um, uh, the, and, and this, uh, this starts to make sense, right? Because what we are talking about when we talk about AIs building a world model is understanding how the 2D images, the screen captures that we were talking about before with the computer use starts to become a way that, that, uh, represents the world when you stack them together and AI is faster at dimensionality than humans are like significantly faster and actually uh more right like we don't have more than 3d 4d uh maybe 5d if you uh are a sci-fi fan but uh like ai can do uh more d's um more d's all the time we got all the d's for you yeah there are there are, there are zillions of d's in in the d right. i'll slip it i just want to confirm real quick yes it's okay, so it. Had it correct okay uh and i'll pop the link in the chat okay just want to make sure so we're using uh we have the right stuff oh i'm into it's moving too fast let me there we go okay um so i don't know we'll round rob it a little bit that's one yep. from beth we'll come back to you beth uh carl you got another new a quick news story and then we'll go to andy and we'll kind of bounce around here. yep um i have so 11 labs just today than labs um they just released voice prompt to voice so you can create a new voice based on any kind of prompt that you you want so um uh, i just wanted to quickly share what they were doing 
Um, it was, uh, I'll do one about a pirate or something. If you can bring it on screen. Uh, yes, Beth, can you pull it up? Sorry, I know you're looking at the news. It wouldn't let me grab it. Oh, yeah. So you can just prompt your own. Introducing voice design. Aha, Captain. Set sail for adventure. Now you can create any voice simply by typing a text description. Aye, lad, there's magic in these old bones yet. Or how about the voice of an angry ogre? Get out of my way if you know what's good for you. Or maybe you want a cute little sassy mouse. Watch out! So that's cool and all. The first thing I thought of is, could I create a voice that's similar to another person? <laughs> that's the first thing I thought of. So I, I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. I was I was just on Eleven Labs, and they have the um they have the voices, the new models, like add a new voice. So I'm curious to see what I can play around with it. I think they you can definitely add very cool things because so sometimes the voices that they have there, if you want a brand new voice and you don't want to clone anything, it, sometimes it's kind of limited um, yeah. for different use cases. So this is kind of a neat feature. And uh, I hope this means that it's like uh, that accents, uh, that more extreme accents are allowed or or like that you can get that because... Um, if you want like a really strong, uh, like I've played the character here before, but uh, my Charlie would just be uh, amazed at what's happening now, right? That voice is not represented anywhere. And when I try to clone it, it, it like it wants to push back. Like this is not yeah. how you should speak. Um, Beth, so you need I'm, to do an entire episode just using that voice. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm just, uh, that, was, that, was, that, was that went soon. The YouTube channel with Mad Talks AI. Yeah, <laughs> I keep listening to that for a while. Uh, I was going to say, it reminds me, uh, Beth and Carl, uh, real quick about um, was it Eleven Labs where uh, I can't remember which who did it, but anyway, it was one of the voices, and it was doing the voice cloning, and it was me in French. And I was like, look, I don't know. I don't know fr French. And people are like, that's hilarious because that's French Canadian, but that's not French, French, France. And so there was a clear difference. And to me, you know, like not knowing French, I'm like, I don't know. It sounds like it looks like I'm speaking French. And they're like, yes, if you live in Canada, that is not so bad. But if you live in France, that's ridiculous, you know? So just to your point about, you know, getting to these, uh, these more, uh, you know, dialing in on the different dialects and things like that that's something we haven't seen obviously we've heard aaron talk about this quite a bit being from perth australia i am sure aaron would say this too an australian accent to me is an australian accent but i am sure a perth australian accent is not the same thing as melbourne or sydney or Cairns. so you know but like to him there's a big difference and he's like yeah it doesn't really do a great job of capturing what he actually sounds like uh makes it harder for him and his clients to do that okay andy Hit us up with another one. Yeah, so we we mentioned uh, that on last Friday's show, uh, Perplexity's uh, knowledge search and spaces uh, new features, and I, I wanted to add a nuance to that that was announced, and that is okay. So knowledge search and spaces is you can create a space, you can upload documents there if you're a pro user or an enterprise pro user. Uh, and that becomes a, a retrieval augmented uh, generation system for you that combines search out on the web, perplexity search, with search of those documents that you've put into that store. Well, now they're adding third-party data integration. So if you have a subscription to a data service out there, you can add that to your space. And that allows you to expand the knowledge base so that it's not only looking across the public web, and your internal files that you've uploaded, but proprietary data sets. An example of that is Crunchbase. If you have a subscription to Crunchbase, which you know gives you information about zillions of startups out there historically and, and to the present, it's an enormous database. If you subscribe to Crunchbase, you can add that to this. So you now you see this perplexity model of RAG getting really sophisticated. The, the other one I'll just mention quickly is a, is a funding round for Crew AI, 18 million at a $100 million valuation. Crew AI is an agent 
multi-agent AI system platform. So you can deploy and provide tools to manage agents' access, track performance, and measure ROI. So Crew AI, which has been around for a while as an agentic kind of startup, got $18 million to, to move forward. That's all. Um, on that, I just want to mention that tomorrow we are going to be doing a show talking about perplexities, uh, AI new tools. So like how they're sort of reinventing that enterprise search and knowledge sharing, which is right in line with what you're just saying, Andy. So that'll certainly come up more on tomorrow's show. And I don't want to mention the company, but I had a client that I worked with for a long time um, through Scaled and they had proprietary databases. In their case, they had proprietary databases on the ultra high net worth people of the world, you know, that 0.01% in how you would market to them if you were, let's say, a nonprofit looking for money from that ultra high net worth is drastically different than how you would market to somebody even below another level down. So a $4 billion person isn't marketed to the same way a 500 million is. And of course you could trickle that down to the smaller levels as well. And, um, that's what they do. They have these databases that are that are kept up and pruned, and 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 you can imagine being able to attach to that through a perplexity, and then layering on maybe your specific stuff. So let's say you have a nonprofit, and that nonprofit, you know, has certain ways that they want to get their word out to get people connected to a database like this company has. Now you basically like supercharge perplexity. And its ability to give you back not only stuff that's relevant to your nonprofit, but also pulling in data that's really, really relevant to how you might reach out to somebody. So we'll talk about that more tomorrow, but there's just one like easy use case. I really, really love that um, on that. So that, that'll be on tomorrow's show. I had a second point, Jeff, but I don't remember what it was. Okay, let's uh, do a rapid fire because we're kind of out of time. Uh, I, I feel like we didn't get to a lot here. So Beth, do you have another story you want to share real quick? No, I want to hear Andy's next story. Andy's next story. Go for it. Okay. Well, the last one that I've got is that there's a new uh, 2024 state of AI report that synthesizes everything that's been happening in this year in AI and resolves it to the following. I'll read their, their sort of their headline. The key trends are convergence in frontier lab performance. So all these high-end models are getting very similar. Increasing focus on planning and reasoning in LLMs and the expansion of foundation models into multimodal domains. So those are, if you wanted to get a short take on what's happening in the world of AI, it's those three things. And uh, the last one I had that we just didn't get to, but I just thought it was interesting, is Ideogram, who has been a player in the image space, uh, really released something called Canvas. You got to love, because you know they were thinking of that term Canvas for a while, and then like ChatGTB comes over the top. And then you have Canva. It gets very confusing like it does with agents and all this other stuff. But anyway, what it is, is this idea of a canvas, this digital canvas that you can work with multiple different images. You can expand out. You can replace things. All the cool things you could already do with Ideogram that's actually very good at. Um, but I like this idea of it expanding its world a little bit about being able to zoom out. I love a good organized like workflow board or mind map. And so this idea, at least for me, if I was going to work in a marketing agency, I, I would find a lot of value in being able to look work in a Canvas-like setting because for one, let's say, digital ad, there might be 20, 30, 100, 200 digital assets that are assigned to that, especially I know I've worked with people who work with influencers and it gets very complicated from the influencer side of things about which digital assets get shared with whom. So it gets very, really complicated. I could see something like Ideogram's Canvas actually solving for that pain point, which is super, super cool. When you see somebody, you know, announce something, you go, oh, I immediately see how that could be beneficial to the right marketing agencies or just people who who need a larger digital canvas to kind of work with. So that was one I wanted to mention really quick because I thought it was a cool story. And that literally, I think, came out today. Um, last shot, Carl, did you have any last quick stories to wrap it up? Uh, I had one, but it's, Kind of like depressing, so probably not. We'll end it on ideogram. <laughs> we'll end it. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, we'll wrap it up there. Like like we already said, we're going to be talking about perplexity tomorrow. So come back for that show on Friday. We're going to be talking about machines of loving grace. No, not the not the band as we talked about from the nineteen nineties, um, or the poem that it, that that band was named after. But uh, 
uh, Dario Amode's uh, Amade. That... Dario Amade. Amade. Okay. Well, we knew I wasn't going to get the pronunciation. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. <laughs> Amade. Uh, <laughs> did you did you just say pronunciation? Yes, I did because that's the correct way to say it, Andy. <laughs> Um, that's on Friday. Never mind how I pronounce things. So you know, I get it wrong. Uh, I need an AI that helps me all the time with my pronunciations. Um, that's on Friday. We're going to be talking about that. And Hey, if you want to be like me and prep for that show, you know what you can do? You can copy and paste that entire blog into Google's notebook LM, and it will create you a 15 minute podcast based on that essay if you didn't want to read all the words that's what i intend to do so you could do that too it's free check it out see you see what you get out of it if you want to all right that's it we'll wrap it up everybody have a great day thanks for all the uh cool news stories today and we will see everybody again tomorrow to talk more about perplexity until then have a great one mm-hmm.